brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in all my thoughts and in my words and in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the lasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
please open your gather hymnals to number 45.
Jesus summoned the crowd and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles, Lord is over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for men. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for men. To be a Christian means to be configured to Christ. To be a disciple of our Lord means to follow in the path that he trades for us. And that path, my dear brothers and sisters, includes suffering, includes being a servant. In order to do that, we must learn to be courageous, to have true fortitude as our Lord himself possessed. The ability to do the difficult task as well as to suffer sorrow with gentleness and composure. For Christ did not come here to win earthly glory, but to ransom us from our sins. Now, at this time, I was going to give you the first of a number of funny stories about my dad and about the crazy things he did to get things done around the house. But I had to change that on account of the little accident that I had on Thursday morning, which yesterday became really clear because it got out red before mass. Namely, on my day away from the parish, my brother Joe was painting the basement. It had flooded earlier in the year and so I need a new coat of paint on the floor. And of course, my dad got to be stickiest, most industrial strength paint he could. So my poor brother literally had his hands covered in paint, and he needed me to go grab an old box so he didn't drip paint all over the place. Now we keep said boxes underneath the stairwell in the basement, in the darkest part of the house. And of course, when I tried to turn the light on, the light did not turn on. Much like that light over there. <laughs> I think the bulbs are burnt out. And so I'm fumbling in the dark because I just want to find the box and get it done with it. And I tip over a two by four that smacks me smack dab in the nose. <laughs> I go, ow and continue looking for the box that my brother needs, get the box, and then we begin the half hour ordeal of getting the paint off his hands, because it did not want to come off. But halfway through that, or about 10 minutes later, my brother notices, John, your nose is bleeding. Don't worry about it. Let's just get this done. That's exactly the word my dad would do whenever we had a job to get done around the house. And usually that's the kind of courage that we think of when we hear this word. The strength to get the job done. The energy and the composure to go through a small difficulty in order to achieve an end. In an extraordinary way, this courage is of course best shown by those who are in the police, the fire, the other emergency services, and the armed forces, when they place fear below the needs of the many. And this, of course, is a kind of courage we need in order to serve others. But there is another kind of courage that often goes overlooked. It does not have to deal with fear or anger. 
but it is the fortitude to endure great suffering. It is the courage to not allow our sorrows to overwhelm us. The time that I learned the most about that kind of church is the death of my godfather, Daniel. He had been trained for a triathlon when he dropped. And at 11 30 p.m. on a Wednesday night, I got the call from his guard that he was in Metro Hospital undergoing emergency surgery. So I left in my car, and I've never driven faster, and was very happy that I was wearing my collar, because I was dead certain that a police officer would catch me. Don't try this at home. <laughs> I got there, and he was still in surgery, and I saw his wife, my Aunt Debbie, just holding on just keeping it together because she hurt that much. The surgery kept him from dying that night, but a day and a half later, he went to the Divine Tribunal. I remember clearly my aunt and her daughters being ravaged by grief. You could see it in their eyes, you could see it as they walked, but they kept going throughout his death and in the year, two years, it took them to mourn his passing. My dear brothers and sisters, that is also a form of courage. That is also a way that we are like Christ, the suffering servant, crushed by infirmity brought low, but not giving up. As long as we do not give in to the wrath, as long as we do not give in to the fear, as long as we do not allow our sorrows to suck us into the abyss, we are being courageous like Christ himself. This courage, though, is a quiet one because it merely keeps us going and doing the simple things in life. But I am convinced that such courage is of the highest order, that it fulfills our Lord's words, whoever wishes to be first among you to be the slave of all. We need such courage. We need such fortitude to get through the trials and tribulations of this life, as well as to merit grace for others. When we are brought down low, may we pray for such strength. And when we also are in good spirits, may we train through penance by, by self denial to build up our capacity for such courage, that when the cross comes, and it comes to each of us, we might rely not on our human strength, but on the strength of God and His beloved Son, who came to free us all from sin. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God and not be.
Father, that our Father in heaven hears us when we pray. We now turn to him to please our petition. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, the pastor, the teacher of God's people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For recovering the values of duty, integrity, and service among government workers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the men and women who work in restaurants, hotels, and the entertainment industry, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For gratitude to our Eucharistic Lord, who gives us life up as a ransom for many, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our confirmation students, as they begin their preparation for the sacrament, that the Holy Spirit might stir them to become examples of Christ to the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, we pray especially for Father Domley, Steve France, Betty Dingle, Marion Rebar, Peg Ferrosi, Irene Janicek, Donald Perosnik, Jane Wayman Waite, Cal Berman, Fran Mapperjack, Danielle Bradford, and Beth King. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, especially John Childress, Dennis Whaley, Brian Cross, and for the parishioners of Immaculate Conception and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. We bring our hopes and desires before you, in union with the atoning work of your Son, the eternal priest, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The second collection is for World Mission Sunday. Please open your missalettes to number 292.
Great breath. Let my sacrifice and may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Oh, man. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to suffer the Lamb.
participation in heavenly things. We do be helped by what you give it in this present age and prepare for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. One quick announcement. The Knights of Columbus are currently doing the pancake breakfast at the Knights of Columbus Hall in Geneva until 1 o'clock today. When I went last month, the food was good, so hopefully it's still good. So if you have the time and the inclination, please go and enjoy. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Open your missile to number 353. 